So on Thursday and Friday, we talked about factoring in the box, right? And we talked about taking a GCF out, putting it in the box. It's got to multiply and add. And so that always works. But there's two special cases I want to talk to you about just a second. They're going to make your life a lot easier if you can recognize them. Okay, and I hope if you did your homework um, and you were checking your work that maybe you picked up on at least one of these patterns. So the first one is what we call a difference of two squares. Okay, now what does difference mean? Okay, think operation. Subtraction. Hold on a second. Will somebody grab that, please? All right, now say it again. Difference means what? Subtraction. When we talk about squares, we're talking about perfect squares. So something that you can multiply by itself twice to give you that number. Things like x squared, 4, 25, um, 81 x squared, even things like x to the fourth, because x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. So these are all perfect squares. So to set us up, if I'm asked to factor something, and it's two perfect squares. Oh my goodness. All right, um, so I got these two perfect squares and there's a subtraction sign in the middle, okay? Then instead of putting this in the box and having to put the zero in the middle, it factors, you can do the square root of the first one, the square root of the last one, and then write it again with a plus. Wow, I see. So easy. So look back, that 9x, that one we just did, it was like 9x squared minus 1. Both of those are perfect squares, right? So it's 3x minus 1. 3x plus 1. Is that what we got when we factored in the box? Yes. Okay. But now I don't show you this first because it, it's only these certain scenarios. And then you'll try to do this for every single one. Does that make sense to you? Okay. It, it's only got two numbers and both of them are perfect squares and there's a subtraction in the middle. If this were like this, that cannot be factored because there's an addition sign. So but it has, to be subtraction. it has to be subtraction. That's what you got to look for. It has to be subtraction. It's difference of two squares. Um, 4x squared minus 121. Is that a difference of two squares? Mm-hmm. What times itself twice gives you 4x squared? 2x. What times itself twice gives you 121? 11. So you do one with a plus, one with the minus. It doesn't matter which one comes first. You see the benefit here? Because if you put that in the box, four times 121, that's what, 484? It's pretty big. Huh? Yep. All right, so that's the easy one. Now I'm going to show you the one that's a little bit harder. Um, again, you can put this in the box. The numbers just get really big really fast. This is called a perfect square trinomial. So there's a couple of things that you have to look for to meet the criteria to be a perfect square trinomial. Now, checking for a perfect square trinomial is the hardest part, okay? Factoring it is easy peasy, even easier than the other one. All right, so what you want to check for, the first thing is the ends are perfect squares. Now I'm talking about a trinomial, so it's got three pieces. One, two, three. Perfect squares. So we'll say x squared and 25. Check. The next thing you have to check is that the second sign has to be a plus. So those two things are very easy to check for. The last criteria is the hardest that you have to find, and here's what you have to look for. 
You have to see. Miss Wilson calls it a square dance. You take the ends. Square roots of the ends. Multiply and double to get the middle term. To get the middle. Okay, I know that's a lot, but I'll explain it to you as soon as y'all finish writing that. All right, so what we want to check for, we want to check to see if I take the square root of the first, what's the square root of x squared? 1x. What's the square root of 25? 5. If you multiply those two things together, what do you get? 5x, now double it. 10x. That has to be what sits in the middle. Okay? If that were a 5x in the middle, this wouldn't work. Okay, so there's three things you have to check for. You have to check that the ends are perfect squares, the second sign is a plus, and that it's square dances, that you can do the square, the square, multiply, and double to get what's in the middle. If that's the case, now notice I didn't say anything about the first sign, because the first sign can be plus or minus, okay? If it meets these criteria, then you take the square root of the first, you take the first sign, whichever it was, and the square root of the last, and you put a squared outside. And if you put this in the box, you would get x plus 5, x plus 5. So let me show you a couple, and you tell me if they're perfect square trinomials or not before we even factor them, okay? Let's say Look at the first one. I hear no. Does anybody disagree? Let's go through our three checks. Are the ends perfect squares? Is x squared a perfect square? <laughs> yes, they're both perfect squares. Is the second sign a plus? Yes. Is the middle term square, square, multiply, and double? I hear no and yes. What's the square root of x squared? What's the square root of 16? Together you get 4x and doubled it gives you, so it checks. So if I factor this, you're going to get x, the first sign, 4 squared. <coughs> it's just a pattern where you don't have to work quite so hard to get to the answer. Okay. Now, we'll use it for something different later in the chapter, so I want you to be able to recognize it. But right now, it's just a tool to help cut down on some of your work. How about here, the second one? Is that a perfect square trinomial? Why? Second, second this right here keeps it from being a perfect square trinomial. How about the last one? Yes. Yes, I hear yes. Second sign is a plus. The ends are perfect squares. If you do the square root... The square root, oh, uh-uh, why? What did I not do? You have to multiply them and then double, oops, six, to get what's in the middle. So no, this one is not. Yes, and then double that. It's multiply and double. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so that's just a check. Now today, what I'm gonna have you do, 